Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike Traven's RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your XLR Nitro 33DK5 5th wheel toy hauler. You guys picked a beautiful unit here. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. First thing I want to take into consideration, your slides. Got them out for you so you can get a good eye on them. See about how much room you're going to need to bring them in and out, unimpeded, and leave yourself a walking space along the off-camp side over here. Then I want you to think about where your power and water connection is going to be. They are both right next to each other, docking station and your power, at the front of your off-camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Also, don't forget, leave room for your ramp to come down. Once you arrive, I was unhooking the hitch. Hitchman will go over this in depth with you. Come to the auto leveling system. Press both, both buttons to turn it on. Hit hitch height and bring it up or down. Once it's all off, you're gonna hit auto level. That's gonna run down all your auto leveling jacks. Get the unit nice and level for you. Once you got a level, we can hook up our power and water. 50 amp service right here. Where these new cords go in is they go in at an angle and twist to the right and then lock it on with this black washer. At the end of this 50 amp service, should you need it, a lot of camps are 30 amp. 50 to 30 amp dog bone comes to your convenience pack. And if you ever need to plug in a home, there's a 30 to 110 you can throw on here and reduce it all the way down. Just run appliances accordingly when you're on 110, you don't want to start popping fuses. Now right, we got our power hooked up. See how long your cord is. It's 30 foot. Um, let's hook our water up. Made it real simple here. You have fresh water connection, city water connect, and black tank flush. We're gonna hook up the campsite at city water connection. Open this up, find your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure 40 to 50 psi, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this when putting fluid into your unit. Hook up your hose, hook up your water pressure regulator, but don't turn your water on yet. Let's go find your hot water heater. So over on your campsite, just to the right of your entry doorway, is your hot water heater. All we're doing at this point, I'm gonna show you this whole door will come right off. All we're doing at this point is making sure our drain plugs back in. Plumber's tape recommended. You turn that back in there nice and tight. Once that's in there tight, you can go ahead and turn on your water over there. Now, after your water's been running for a while, go into this pressure release valve, pull on that, release the air out of the lines. You got water flowing out of here. Go inside and open up your hot water tap. Once water's flowing out of there, it's not gonna be hot yet, but once it's flowing out of there, you know your hot water heater's full, and you can go ahead and turn it on from inside. You do have an electric element down here. That should remain on off, unless you're running on 110. If you're running on 110, go ahead and turn that on, as well as turn it on electric indoors. Also in your hot water heater. Um, if it doesn't seem to be working, have a couple reset valves right here. They'll be bubbled out. Simply press them back in to reset. And again, your pressure release valve. Now let's say you're gonna go camping and you're gonna go dry docking. You're not gonna hook up to city water. We're gonna come back around to your docking station. And we're gonna hook up to the fresh water connection. 
Use your water pressure regulator again. Hook up your hose. Treat the hot water heater the same way. The difference is when you're using potable water, first to tell when this is full, go inside and press your fresh water button to, to tell how much is in this tank. You can tell when it's full in there. Um, and then you can shut off your hose. Just remember when using that potable water is when you're gonna to wanna to turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when hooked up to city water, it's already pressurized. All right, we got our water and electricity hooked up, set up the camp. Let me go ahead and walk you around the unit and show you a few other things. Starting here in your docking station. Again, fresh water, city water, black tank flush. We'll talk about that when leaving the campsite. Speaking of black tank, here's where you pull it and here's where you pull your gray tank. This is if the unit had an extra gray tank. Antifreeze inlet valve, that's where you winterize that. You set that to bypass when winterizing. Here's a uh, outdoor shower. There's a big long blue hose under your bed. And then your antifreeze valve for letting it out. Over here again, your auto leveling system. Some instructions right there. You also have the LG version that you can run your leveling system on here as well. Lighting, that's a docking light for the front of the unit. Battery disconnect, this will shut off all the battery power to your unit. That'll come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide detector. Finishing up on the front of your off camp side over here is your propane. Set on a regulator, you see it's red. When you open up your tanks, it turns green. Simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using. This side or the one over on the other side. And there's where your uh, wastewater dump will go. And then here back here is your black and gray tank. Fueling station. And here's your uh, gasoline nozzle. Here's where you turn your pump on and off. Your ladder. Simply remove these cotter pins and this whole ladder will shift outward. Go up there, check your seams. Uh, caulk as needed. I recommend a couple times a year. Maintain your roof, get the, get the life out of it. Your big garage, we're gonna open that up here in a little bit. But remember to keep these for the padlock on them. You can also prep for a Furion backup camera. Up there in between them two lights is a device that electronically communicate with the device you can put on the dash of your tow vehicle, giving you a backup camera for this unit. Remember, you do have a 10% off coupon on anything I mentioned you want to purchase. There is a manual override for your slide right there. You have an outdoor uh, fridge out here. Your outdoor speakers. This is your furnace heat release. If you're running your furnace, steer clear of that. It'll get rather warm. This is all set for a TV. Clamp TV on right there, plug in your cable, plug in your 110. Or you can use the 110 for any cooking devices you have outside here. Again, your hot water heater. And your low point drain. Here's where you drain your low point when we're leaving the campsite. And over on the other side is the white one to dump if you're using potable water. Then over here, your storage. There's your manual hand crank. Your other propane tank. Our generator prepped up here. If you decide to get a generator, it's all ready for you. And over here, are your batteries. Uh, check your battery post now and then. You are bouncing this house down the road. Want to make sure nothing's wiggled loose over time. And about covers everything on the outside. Let's go ahead and take a look on the inside. Huh. All right, so coming up inside your unit. First thing I'd like to point out, make sure that you and everyone that's camped with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of emergency. To the right of the entry doorway, I actually start all the way down here on the bottom. This is your access panel to your breaker and fuse box. So you got a ton of 15s in there. Highly recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. And inside this big cabinet here, you all your manuals and your control center. So here's where you check your tanks. 
starting with your gray tanks fresh tank this is where you can tell when your potable water is full hold that button in and your battery no battery left on here here's where you start and stop your generator if you ever hook one up uh, bedroom slide kitchen slide we'll run them back in when we leave here here's where you can cut off your fuel pump from indoors here's where you turn on your tank heaters if you're in inclement weather and you think your tank's gonna freeze here's where you turn on your water heater if you're hooked up and then over here is where you turn on your water pump if uh, using potable water all your lighting step lighting awning light here's your awning extend and retract I'm going to run that out real quick. Show you how far to run these out. This door here. Just hit extend on that. Big awning here. So you only want to run that out until that flap falls down to 90 degrees and then you can see the metal bar then you know you're out far enough there's your bright LED awning light on the bottom of uh, the arm there there's a pitch control where if it's raining you can pull down on that and it'll pitch the awning over and let the rain run off in a certain direction. Slam locks, they work best when slammed. I covered everything in there. The rest is just storage. Your television with remote. Turn it on. Shut that back off here. Down here is the Connex sound system. You can manually do it here, or you also have a remote for that. Turn your music up. So you can play this in different zones. Zone A, A on, B on, and C is on. Or you can play just outdoors or mute everything turn them all back on set that off you can also pair this to your phone or bluetooth let's talk about your fireplace they're not just for looks anymore turn it on down here yeah i can get all the different pretty colors on here but the biggest thing is your heat crank that heat up to high and in the morning if it's chilly and i, sh I shut it off i'm turning it back on there's a low and a high in the morning or evening if it's chilly in here instead of using your gas by running your furnace come out here and crank this up you'll see that it'll get uh toasty in here in no time here's your inverter showing what power is being used over here on the floor is your vacuum system all your vacuum connections are under your bed simply hook up your vacuum here turn it on to use the vacuum with the hose or simply lift this and sweep away your Your recliners on what I call a parachute pull. Pull up on this handle here, and it gives you a recliner. You have to push it back down with your feet. You have your own lighting over here. Coming into your kitchen. On your table here, I do want to show you, you do have some 110 over here next to the table. Bench on one side, chairs on the other, another 110 on this end. Self-explanatory microwave, you do have a high and low fan, as well as surface light. For your stove, this glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Have a panel light. Turn it to light, it'll turn to blue. Blue to red, excuse me, and then just hit your spark over here. Same thing on your oven. Turn this to light over here, turns to red. Hit your spark over here and that'll light your oven. You also have a pan drawer. Also an oven light if you turn your panel light down. I have individual lighting here, 110s, 
Just do these by hand. One tens under here. Come over here to your max air. That's your max air over there. Simply hit on. It will open and turn on. Or you can just close the vent. Hit off. You can change the levels. Fan on level four will really crank that thing and see it automatically shuts itself. Your thermostat. We will start by turning your air on. Bill has some lights. Air kicked on. We are going to now change this to, excuse me, mode to the furnace. You notice your air shuts off quickly. Furnace just kicked on. We will shut off the furnace. Now your furnace fan takes a little bit longer to shut off. You'll notice as I run the video, eventually you'll hear it shut off here. It does on all units. So down below that on the floor is your safety alert carbon monoxide propane detector. This is 12 volt. The reason I mentioned this 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you're gonna be gone for the day, nothing uh, plugged in charging your battery, use your battery disconnect to keep this from running your battery down. Over here is your Dometic fridge. Open up your freezer. Oh, excuse me. In top here is your controls. Turn it on. Over here you can see it's set to auto. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, you, you go to gas. You can change this to gas. See it's over to LP side now. Your temperature settings are one through five. It off here. That covers everything in the living room. Before hitting the garage, let's go up here. Now, how way more lighting? Going into your bathroom. What I want to mention in here, you have another max air vent for your bathroom. This is where your 110 with GFCI resets at, and you have a ton of lighting in here, accent lighting, etc. out of there and heading up into your bath be bedroom excuse me some one tens here show you how this lighting works touch it once you got a blue light hold it in a good reading light another one on that side you have your own individual lights up here to turn on and off the rest are control from here you also have your own thermostat up here 110 and cable hookup with the TV backer, there's a backer in the wall here if you want to get a TV mounted in here. Your emergency exit window. You get 110 on both sides. And your wardrobe slide. Now very important when you get ready to leave the campsite, before closing up this slide, make sure all these doors and drawers are closed. Set back to your garage. There's your AC in here. Your smoke alarm, there it is. Up in the hallway. All right, let's come out to your garage. All right, so back here in the garage. So you got a lot of lighting, all controlled from here. One tent up here, your bed control. Run that up and down in a minute. This is for your awning back here. This is all prepped for a washer and dryer should you ever need it. All your tie downs. Also have another fire extinguisher back here. Speakers up there. TV back through here with cable. Set it to cable or HDMI it looks like. So, bed control. Bring your bed control down. So right now it's bringing down both. And that system, you see the top bunk stops there. You have a ladder right there to get up on the top bunk with. 
these will continue to run themselves down. Once they stop, all you're gonna do is jackknife these up. So you're gonna lift up on the front at the same time. See what it does here. As grabbing the back and pull up on that. That's how your seating sets up. Same on the other side. Lift up on the front, brings your back up, grab the back and pull it towards you. Now I have two of these tables. They're both going to be stored underneath your bed for travel. So let me show you how to hook these up. I'll do one over here. Remove these stoppers. And when you grab your table legs, this metal piece on the end, you want it all the way loosened to the left. Because this is going to set right down in here and it's going to grab underneath. Line it up. And when you start to twist it to the right, you'll feel it. That piece underneath grabbed, and now you're tight. Repeat the same process here. What you're saying before putting it in is make sure this is loose. Find your slot, get it in there, twist to the right, and you're locked in. Now just simply set this on top. There you have your table. Again, you have two of these stored up underneath your bed for travel. Let me take this back down, lay these back down. All you do is lift up on the front. You see the back goes down, push, push the back down. Give me a moment. I got everything laid back down now. Let me show you how to set this up so that when you take your top back, top bunk back up, you can bring down just your seating. So you have these little metal clasps right here. Simply flip it forward. Flip it forward so the long end is to the outside. I've already done the back two. Let's lift your bed up. So it's a much easier process than the cotter pins. If you're a pain to reach up there and put in, you just flip them down. You can actually just lower a few feet from the top when you have it set up the other way and just flip them over and push it back up. It'll lock that up there for you. I'll show you what it gets there. So you do have a vent up there as well and that little black button in the back corner you can press for a fan. Your speakers, your nightshades here, your deck, or your uh, ramp with cables for a deck. Now listen. You hear that? That locked that up there. So sure you can bring down just those. Alright, so that's how your bed works here, back here. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up. Alright, so now I went through and shut off all the lights except for what can be controlled by this one here. I'm going to bring in your bedroom slide. I did have your bedroom door open so you can see it coming in. Short slide there. And then bring in the kitchen slide. Make sure all your doors and drawers are closed, your recliners are down. Nothing in the way to impede the slide from coming in. Comes in rather quickly. Every inch utilized. Shut 
go for lights and set outside. All right, now when you're outside, you know here, lock and deadbolt your door. Lift and turn this hand over. That's secure. You'll bring your steps up. Come to this low point drain right here. First, disconnect your water and cable. Remember, disconnect your water and cable at the same time. And then come over here, open up these low point drains. Come to your hot water heater. Pull up on this pressure release valve. That's gonna drain all the hot water out of your hot water heater. Remember to close this back down or your door won't come on. And then you can put your drain plug. Remember to be careful, this will be hot water. Set them back in. Head around to your off camp side. Hook our power and head on up to the dump station. Now at the dump station, I can start in the back. You can you have two spots to dump. You can get a bigger, stronger, longer sewage hose. Hook up back here. First thing you do is pull your black tank. It's gonna be that black handle right there. That's gonna dump all your sewage out. After you've dumped this one back here, bring your suit hose back up here, hook up to this wastewater holding tank. Now you're gonna go to your docking station and you're gonna pull your black, black tank drain. Now if you pull that black tank drain, sounds like it's no longer draining, leave that handle open, come to your black tank flush. Must be open. Again, with your water pressure regulator, hook up the hose at the campsite. Turn that hose on for a good five minutes. That's gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. Shut off your hose. Pull your gray tank. After you close your black, pull your gray tank. That's gonna be your cleaner water, your sinks and your showers. You clean your sewage hose out for you. You can conveniently Come right back here with it. And they have given you a sewage hose storage right here. Open that up and conveniently store it in there. Well, that about covers everything. Hope you guys enjoy this nitro for many years to come. Happy camping.